Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. I'm going to be tackling a topic that I think a lot of people end up messaging me about and they get a little bit excited about finding something and they're right to. Finding a bug is big, it's really exciting, but they need to take a little step backwards because sometimes you can report something that's not actually a vulnerability, at least not initially or how, a me how it seems in the first place. So today we're going to be talking, you found something or you think you found something, what do you have to do before you report it? Just to confirm you found something, just to confirm that you've actually got the bug you think you've gotten, etc. And once again, this video is very kindly sponsored by Bug Crowd. They're sponsoring every video in the Bug Bounty course series. They're covering every video in the Bug Bounty course series. A great hacker needs a great platform and Bug Crowd is the home of the hacker. They provide hackers with the best opportunities to make money, advance their skills, build community and unleash ingenuity through their security knowledge platform. They provide distinctive educational content for hackers. You can rapidly pick up new skills through Bug Crowd University or gain practical experience with one of their many monthly challenges. Or maybe you want to follow real hacking experts like myself as we cover methodology, shortcuts and tools. Bug Crowd has an entire level up series unique to the industry that covers all of that. So if you're interested in joining Bug Crowd, head over to bugcrowd.com forward slash hackers now and join the Bug Crowd community. Thank you very much to Bug Crowd for sponsoring this video. Please thank you so much to Bug Crowd for sponsoring this video. So let me tell you, when you find your first vulnerability or even you think you find it, the rush you get feels amazing. Uh, and it's so easy to get caught up in the excitement of, oh my God, I found something. And like also to mentally have also received the bounty before you've even like actually submitted it. But my advice is to try to avoid rushing to report something right away because one, you could be leaving money on the table by you rush to report something and you realise, oh, I could have escalated that to an account takeover. You could misunderstand the pre you can misunderstand the prerequisites of that vulnerability and actually, you know, it's something a user intentionally has to do to themselves, like a self-XSS. Or you can, or you can actually go out of scope. And if it's out of scope, then, you know, you're not going to get paid by a bounty. So my top tips, TLDR here, think to yourself, is this actually a good bug to report? Is it impactful? Is it something that I think is a genuine security issue? I have had situations where I found something that could be a security issue, but it's quite minor or it's debatable and I just don't want to have an argument with triage. I'd rather find something that I know is a vulnerability. To confirm that it is actually a bug, a very common one is IDOS and I'll be talking a bit about that. Confirm it's actually in scope or owned by the company depending on if it's an open scope program. Understand the requirements of a vulnerability. So what kind of setups do you need? What kind of accounts do you need? What permissions do you need? Make sure you really understand the impact slash escalator if you can. And finally, is it worth actually fixing this? Is this going to be a P5 kind of actually, you know, it's an accepted risk. So one of the best piece of advice I got from Alex Chapman, he's a full-time bug bounty hunter uh, and he does really well in a lot of live hacking events. He doesn't report every findings. He only report critical and high findings, sometimes medium. And what I really took away from this conversation with him is that you shouldn't really report every bug because it's not worth putting in the effort to spend like hours arguing back and forth with triages that this is a genuine vulnerability. If the impact is really low and the security team doesn't care, they just don't bother going for that argument. So a lot of the pros don't report anything below a P2. That means there's a good opportunity for us at the bottom to kind of pick up those P3s and P4s, but often they're not reporting P4s for a reason. It's because it's just not worth their time. So really think when you find a bug, whether or not this is actually worth reporting, this is something you want to defend. And a really common one I see 
is this idol. So a lot of people will perform an idol by copying the cookie from one account, putting it into another account, and then seeing that the API returns back a 200. That is not an idol. An idol is when you can take an account cookie for account A, use it on an endpoint that you originally hit with account B that has one of account B's IDs in there, for example, and be able to affect B's account with A's cookie. It's not being able to affect A's account with A's cookie. That's just how cookies work. And I really recommend this video called Why Your Idols Get NA'd, which is the kind of full explanation of how cookies work. Um, and I think it's a really great example of people will find that they'll report it, they'll get an aid, and then they come in to me, send me an email that says, this program's screwing me over. They're not screwing you over, that's just how cookies work. And this is why it's really important to make sure you really fully understand the vulnerability. So whether that's something like reflected XSS, if you've got reflected XSS, but the field is only visible to the person who is performing the XSS, that's not a vulnerability. A user has to do that to themselves. And that is a significant barrier that a lot of organizations will say, you know what, yeah, that's just a risk. Like if a user is putting stuff, putting like random JavaScript payloads into their, I don't know, um, pound notes, that's on them. Or SSRF, if the ping back from the SSRF isn't from your target server, it's from somewhere else, that's not a vulnerability you can report to the client. It just isn't. So it's really important to understand, have I actually found a vulnerability or have I found like known features? The kind of follow up to this is really, is it in scope? Now, personally, this is my own personal opinions here, you should not be expecting a bounty if a asset is out of scope, even if it's resolved. Usually things are out of scope because a client doesn't have the vulnerability management in place. Like they haven't got a way to make sure the vulnerability gets branded as the target. So think about something like WordPress. It can also be a recent acquisition that's actually covered under another vulnerability disclosure program. Now, a lot of clients may forward it over to a third party or may forward it internally to something like a recent acquisition and their own security team. But you really can't expect a bounty in that case. You have gone out of scope. You we're doing so without the expectation of award. Now, I know there's a lot of debate here and a lot of people will say, well, if it's been fixed, they should pay a bounty. And you can debate this, but fundamentally, most organizations won't be upset if it's once or twice, but they're not gonna reward it. And actually, if you continue to do out of scope vulnerabilities, you can expect to get penalties because this is stuff they basically said do not touch. So my advice would be never go out of scope. I think the really easy way to do that is to just look at the scope page and look for those big applications or subdomains and just make sure that when you actually find something you're not hitting a subdomain. Understanding the requirements. So I've actually been burned by this one. I got a bug and aid because I couldn't and neither could the triages understand the account and organization setup that I had done. So I found an idol, you were able to delete somebody else's thing. Except for the role that the attacker had in the organization, I didn't understand like how I'd set up the attacker account and the victim account and how the organization was set up. So when the triager couldn't perform it and I sent videos, I was like, look, here's the video, you can see this working. I still got my bug in aid and I kept on pushing with the client, but it got to a point where I was spending more time on this than I'd spend actually on the vulnerability itself. So it's really important to understand the requirements of your bug because otherwise it's just going to get an aid and there was nothing I could really do about that. I mean, I could have taken it to mediation, but sometimes it's just not worth your time. That will be for probably just like $100, $200. So think about what accounts you need, what permissions you need, what information you need from the victim, what the victim has to do, what the attacker has to do. Really make sure that you understand those requirements. And similar, understand the impact. You know, it's really important that you understand what the attacker needs from the victim 
and what damage you can cause the victim. So the best impact bugs are going to be cases where you can damage the victim without the victim doing anything. In some cases, maybe like a stored XSS, they'd have to visit a specific page for something like for something like XSS, in fact, you may just do an alert one pop up, but you can do more. You can escalate it, cause more damages. So the least amount of stuff the victim has to do, the higher the bounty is going to be generally. So can you escalate it? The most common first P1 I see are account takeovers. If you are looking, maybe you've got like a few P4s and you're getting things like XSS or IDOs, I really recommend looking to how you can take that to a account takeover and get a P1. So cross-site scripting to account takeovers because of CSRF. So you're able to write a little JavaScript function which calls, say, a reset password form. Do that all in JavaScript. And because the XSS is calling from the same site, you actually won't be violating same site cookies. Or an IDOR to organization takeover because you can have a permission issue, you can escalate a privileges. The top ones to look at, money, accounts, permissions, can all be P1s and P2s regardless of the bug. So even if the bug says it's a P3, if you can demonstrate that impact, often it will be escalated. Really think about the business logic and what a company will care about. Now, I know a lot of you are still beginners and you haven't found your first bug yet. So don't worry too much about this. Focus on those P3s because that's really where you'll see quite a lot of skill increase over time. But when you are being able to get those P3s quite consistently, do push yourself to grab things like P1s because you can, like, the skill increase is actually not that great. As in, if you're able to find an IDOR, you can probably found an organization takeover. It's just the right IDOR in the right place. And if you report something as soon as you see it's an IDOR, it's vulnerable, then you may be missing out on that kind of business logic of, okay, if I have that, I can start to do this. So again, it's about kind of taking the small things and pulling them out. Is it worth fixing? So P4s, P5s, NAs, arguing, things like that are not going to be worth fixing. If you're in a situation where you're arguing with a client over whether or not it's a P4 or a P5, it's probably not actually worth your time. Your time is valuable. You'd be better off spending that hacking. If you're using scanners like Nucleate, it's going to be a dupe, especially on public programs and especially where you're not you've not looked at like a really in-depth recon and finding all the subdomains and you're paying for data from security trails or whatever, like they are going to be duplicates. And honestly, not everything will get a fix and not everything will get a fix very soon. Like it took me two years to get a vulnerability actually marked as resolved. It's not worth the effort to argue back and forth with a triager whether or not your uh, EXIF data not being removed from a GIF counts as a P4 rather than a P5 because phone cameras can't take P5, can't take GIF photos necessarily by default. And again, it's just this, the constant arguing the back and forth is honestly not worth it. You'd be better off actually putting in extra time to hack and look at another client again you've got to value your time and if you are spending a lot of time going and backwards and forwards with triage it's probably not worth it so just to summarize here these are my tips so first thing is this actually a good bug to report is it impactful is it worth your time is it something where you're gonna to have to argue with the client confirm that what you found is in fact a bug If you're looking at XSS, it should be somewhere that other people can see your XSS payload. If it's an IDOR, you should be able to access another account without using that account's cookies. Confirm that what you found is actually in scope and it's owned by the company. If you are hacking out of scope, a lot of clients won't be angry at you, but 
just bear in mind that if you keep on doing that, you will get penalties by the platform and the client may ask for you to be removed from their program if you are consistently doing it and not in good faith. Understand the requirements of your vulnerability. Don't be like me. Make sure you understand the setup of users and organizations and permissions and really demonstrate and be able to tell the triager, hey, this is the initial setup. Make sure you really understand the impact of a vulnerability. Push it as far as you can. Try and escalate it. Again, most common first P1s are going to be things like account takeovers. And that can often be from things like reset password forms and reset password vulnerability. And finally, is it actually worth fixing? Your time is valuable. It's not worth it to always be trying, going backwards and forwards with triage, trying to get them to care as much about your bug as you do. And especially, you are excited, you have just found something, excellent, go free, go report it, go be excited, go tell all your friends that like you found something, don't give them the vulnerability details, and just wait for that bounty to come in. You know, you've earned it. All right, thank you very much, everybody. I will see you in the next video. We're going to be talking about how to write a report. So once you found something, you confirmed it's a bug, how do you actually make people listen to you? And how do you make the best possible report for quick triage, easy acceptance and a nice bounty. So I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.